All right, as promised, I am here with my good friends, my brothers, Dr. Hakeem and Dr. Naeem Collins. This is Jennifer LeClaire. I'm the senior leader at the Awakening House of Prayer in South Florida, founder of the Ignite Network and author of several books on the Jezebel spirit. I've written three books on this wicked, nasty spirit. And I'm about to write another one because Lester Summerall said that in the last this would be the spirit of Jezebel would be one of the main enemies of the church. And so we need to be equipped. We need to understand as soon as I think I've got Jezebel figured out another aspect, another face, another manifestation springs upon me. That is why I am not one who will say I am an expert at Jezebel. I know a lot about it. It's not my first ballroom dance, not my first rodeo with the spirit. I have I've hit, had it hit me this way, hit me that way, hit me from the back, hit me from the front. I've dealt with it at the principality level. I've dealt with it at the foot soldier level. I know the ins and outs, but we can never say we know it all because that in and of itself is a haughty st- prideful statement that will bring Jezebel to your doorstep saying, hey, 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 you want to see a different way that I work? Let me just smack you around a little bit. But tonight we are going to throw Jezebel down. As a matter of fact, I want you all to begin to hashtag throw Jezebel down. I've got my throw Jezebel down (laughs) t-shirt on. Hallelujah. I did not have it made for this broadcast. Actually, uh, I had it made just because I like to make the announcement. I like to act like Jehu and walking around just letting the devil know, you know what, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the showdown at Mount Carmel. Yes. Amen. And so are my brothers. So I just want to, as you're all coming on, I want to allow uh, these men of God uh, who are just, they've been a blessing to the body of Christ for many years. Uh, We have the same spiritual DNA. And and this is the first time we've done a Facebook Live, but this is not the first time by any means that we We've uh, worked together. We, we've we've uh, we've corresponded. Yes. Uh, you know, we've we've been friends. And so tonight, this is going to be a power-packed broadcast. You know what? Put your seatbelt on. Get a get a soda pop. Get you some Starbucks or whatever you want to drink, and settle back because we're diving deep. Yes. So, so with that, uh, Doctor Hakeem, would you uh, just say a few words about yourself, and then kick it over to your brother, and then we'll get into it. Sure. Well, hi, I'm Doctor Hakeem. I'm a prophet of God um, in the body of Christ, and I am from Wilmington, Delaware. Um, Most of you may not know um, that I have a twin. Uh, He'll introduce himself in a few. Um, But my heart um, for the body of Christ and my assignment is really to see many of you maximize your full potential in Christ. And really to uh, one of the premise of this broadcast is that to identify um, hindering and invisible spirits or demonic spirits that will keep you from fully um, operating in what God has called you to. Um, we, we travel the nations and then uh, abroad equipment people in the prophetic ministry. That's one of our edges and one of our niche. And so we pray that this broadcast will be a blessing to many of you uh, that are coming on and those who will come on and view it again. Amen. Well, I am Naeem Collins. Uh, I am the twin brother of Dr. Hakeem Collins, as he just stated, and we both are known as, for some of you, that's, this may be your first time uh, being introduced to us, we are known as also as the Twin Prophets. So we do a lot of traveling together and just to demonstrate what team ministry looks like. Uh, and how God uses family in a new way. So we both are, uh, we equip, we train, we activate people in the prophetic. We both work uh, very, very hard to see people moving and operating in the supernatural. And our emphasis is that people will come to know that God still speaks today. Amen, amen, amen. I just want to, which one of you guys wants to say an opening prayer? Because I I just want to bind you know, all interference, all technology interference, all distractions. I feel like even now people are beginning to get distracted by, you know, just phones ringing or whatever. And I feel this information is so vital that we really just need to cover it in prayer before we ever start. So one of you guys, uh, prophets, would you, somebody pray? Sure. Father, right now we come to you in Jesus' mighty name a name that's above every name. Father, we come and ask you, Father, that you will have your way on this broadcast, that yes. we will identify, we will mark spots where it needs to be exposed. Father, the agenda is to help many 
to identify, to understand, and to also to break free from every grip of Jezebel, every stronghold of Jezebel, every operation of Jezebel. Father, right now we take authority over every demonic interference, every satanic interference, any distraction, we, we break its power, we break its influence right now in the name of Jesus. Father, that I ask that you will cause our ears and our hearts to be open to receive the impartation, the information, the education, and the revelation and that we will not miss what is being released by these prophetic voices, apostolic voices in this hour. Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do. We ask for your glory, yes, for your Holy Spirit to have uh, have full reign and rule right now in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we thank you for those who will even wake up in the morning and view this broadcast. Let it be fresh revelation. Let it be fresh for them to, to succeed and to overcome every demonic plot of the enemy that will keep them bound from fulfilling their destiny. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 All right, let's get to it. Well, here you see, you know, in the Bible, we see uh, the spirit of Jezebel. And some would say, well, I don't see the spirit of Jezebel mentioned in the Bible. But we have to understand that this spirit was influencing the wicked queen in uh, First and Second Kings, the same spirit found in Revelation 2 and 20. Jezebel, not a spirit of control. Jezebel is a spirit of seduction. Uh, yes. Je Jesus said, I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel. He said this to the church at Thyatira, that you tolerate, you mm -hmm. put up with. You won't deal with it. You won't confront it. You won't throw her down. You don't want to deal with the waterworks. You don't want to be intimidated. So you're, you, you pull back. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, um. who calls herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. So where you find Jezebel, you'll find immorality, you'll find, yeah. and that's not just sexual, that is, that is anything immoral, and you'll find idolatry. And so the spirit, let me just say this, the spirit, you know, before cancer uh, was labeled, identified, it, it, doctors didn't know what to call it, but doctors in many nations saw there was a cell, there was a, 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 a something killing people, uh -huh. and they decided to call it cancer. And so this spirit of Jezebel is really a spirit of seduction, but because two different characters in the Bible manifested these traits, we call it Jezebel. Uh -huh. and, and we see in 1 Kings 18, verse 4, yes. that, that Jezebel slaughtered the prophets. Yes. And, and the ones who weren't slaughtered were hid in caves, caves. to preserve their life. And so we see uh, that Jezebel in the both Old and New Testaments is targeting believers uh, with destruction. And so we want to we first dive in here, just talk about uh, some of the ways that Jezebel operates. Now we're specifically talking about the assassination aspect. There are we could we could we could talk for ten hours <laughs> on all the different ways right. Jezebel manifests. But in this season, we're seeing the rise of an assassination spirit, spiritual hitmen, assassinations, uh, like a mafia, a, you know, a spiritual mm -hmm. mafia. And, and Jezebel it works with a cast of characters: Ahab, the false prophets. Uh, the eunuchs, uh, even her children, to uh -huh. sort of orchestrate this assassin agenda. Uh, but guys, uh, just sort of take turns, chime in cool. on, on some of the ways you've seen Jezebel working with this assassination spirit. Or if I've left something out in background that you need to add, please uh, take your liberty. Absolutely. Well, well, one of the things that we've discovered over the years, uh, especially with uh, the prophetic, because I know when we first started out, uh, in the prophetic, uh, one of the first uh, spirits that we've encountered uh, was a Jezebel spirit. And just as Apostle Jennifer has stated, uh, even when cancer first came out, like, you, like she said, that there wasn't really a way to really call it. And so us in our infancy of our prophetic ministry, we really didn't have a gauge on what uh, spirit was really attacking us until we dived a little bit and did some homework on uh, some of the manifestation and one of the main primary spirits that really validated uh, that we were really called to the prophetic was the Jezebel spirit. 
and or if anyone has been called to the prophetic or have a prophetic anointing. And so we discovered that very early on in our in our tenure of ministry, uh, especially when we will be in prayer. And uh, and I recall a time and I can let Dr. Hakeem speak a little bit to that because he was yes. one that was mainly targeted. But God had started to develop us in the prophetic through intercession. And and during that time, that's where we first encountered a Jezebel spirit because we were assisting uh, a pastor in building his church and not knowing that we were actually right in the hands of God where he was training us in the prophetic and not even know it. And and at the same time, that's where we first was able to identify uh, this Jezebel spirit was through leadership. And as God started to uh, give my brother and I some level of influence and in, in movement in the house and assisting this, this local pastor with his ministry and with building up the house, uh, we first started in prayer and in the session. And that's where uh, we first encountered that spirit. And I'll let my brother speak a little bit about what, what happened with that. Yeah, let me dive into that. And so one of the things that uh, one of the ways that you'll be able to identify um, a Jezebel spirit or an operation is that when you are anointed, when God has earmarked you or highlight you um, in ministry or there is a strong call upon your life, one of the things that Jezebel will target is those who are anointed by God, one th- those who are called by God. And so if you who are watching have experienced that um, or you felt uh, cycles of of hits, it's because there's something. Listen, the enemy is threatened by your potential. And if the enemy is threatened by your potential, that's that is an earmark. That is that's how dangerous you are against the kingdom of darkness. And so as we were emerging, as we were growing in our prophetic ministry and help building an apostolic center, um, one of the things that we found was Jezebel was attracted, that type of spirit was attracted to prophetic houses, which was strange. We didn't know it <laughs> initially, yeah. but we found out later as we begin to operate, as we uh, found ourselves working, serving the house, um, Jezebel will find itself in its way, sneaky or just mysteriously in the leadership. That is one of the, the ways that we found out is because they always find themselves in, uh, you know, in the ear of the pastor or in the round tables, or find themselves in meetings for some reason. And so whenever we had something to say, we, we found that there was this Jezebelic spirit that would always counteract what we say. Yeah. And so if the pastor said, well, twins, what is God saying? And so the Jezebel spirit will always come back with something that they believe God is saying. It always is counteract what is really the move of God and what God really wants to do. So we found a pattern of that, Apostle uh, Jennifer. We found a pattern that. And so at first we didn't pay attention to it, but your discerning of spirits start kicking in. When you're prophetic, it start kicking in. You say, something's not right with this. And then you go to prayer and God has start identifying. He didn't say, well, she or he has a Jezebel spirit, but you start seeing habits and, and patterns that God is trying to highlight, especially the prophets and prophetic people and, and prophetic intercessors. And so that was one of the things. Every time we had something to say or we were called upon, what is God saying? What is God doing? What is God showing us in prayer? This Jezebel spirit will always counteract and, and, and minimize what really God was saying through the prophetic voices. And so I'm going to say this. There was an instance that happened to me. I want to be very transparent because this is going to bless many people that are watching. This is going to help many of yeah. some of you are experiencing this. And this was, we were at 19 yeah. at the time. We were very uh, young at the time, growing and strong and, 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 and developing in our prophetic call. It was new to us. And so we're helping leadership. And so it was my time to preach. Uh, it was my initial sermon. And the pastor gave me an opportunity. During that time, he put his sister um, in charge and so whenever one of the things that I found out is whenever me and my brother would receive a prophetic word, I would and, and where this sister is, the pastor's sister would sit behind me. I would literally feel darts behind me. I would feel darts like like someone is shooting something. Whenever there's a prophet or a prophetic word that was sent and spoken over me and my brother's life, I would feel like something is hitting my neck or nerve yeah. or something. Why? Because Jezebel doesn't like prophetic words that are released when it's pertaining to destiny, when yes. it's pertaining to purpose, when it's pertaining to uh, your, your, your promise in, in, in God. So the, the make a long story short is that it was my time to preach and my pastor didn't show up. 
That was ironic. He didn't show up. So the, uh, his sister ended up showing up when I preach and I preach out of first Kings. I begin to talk about my first message, which was, it was. Like, was dealing with the spirit of Jezebel. <laughs> when I mentioned <laughs> Jezebel, soon I mentioned her name. Yes. I read the scripture, mentioned her name and was about to expose the operation to set that church free. The, the, the sister, which was the pastor's sister, she stood up and she came over to me. This is in front of everybody, the whole congregation, and whispered in my ear and said, give me the mic. Your time is up. And she said, have a seat. This is the first time I've ever experienced wow. something yeah. like this ever in my ministry as a young prophetic voice, as a young prophet. And right now, even as I'm talking about it, I'm setting someone's free. Someone is yes. being liberated. Yes. Someone is being touched because there's been one way or another, someone silenced your voice. Come on. Someone calls you or muzzled you from keeping you from speaking what God has given you. Listen, this was my first sermon. And so this is what God gave me. And she told me to have a seat, be quiet. And she took the mic from me. There were people watching. Their mouth was wide open. They could not believe what happened. And so the, the natural side of me, the fighter side of me, the old nature, wanted to respond. But I heard this peace in my spirit as a young prophet, God saying, do not respond. I will vindicate. And I sat down because I obeyed leadership. Because why? She was in leadership. Now, I want to say this. Jezebel is not a gender. Excuse me, a gender. But yeah. it has an agenda. Yes. yes. I will make that very clear. Jezebel is not a gender specific. It's a spirit. It's an operation. And so, but I'm using this woman because this, this was, this was just a woman that happened, but a man can have a Jezebel spirit. Yeah. And so it, it just, it really crippled me at the time because it never happened to me. And so what she wanted to do, or that spirit of the gender was to silence me before I ever get started. And that's what I wanted to kind of share. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. My God, my God. You yeah. know, that, re that reminds me uh, of a time in, in, in my life when I first discerned that God was calling me into the prophetic. And I think, you know, the Jezebel spirit, I believe that, that, that demons can sometimes see the markers of giftings on our life before we see them. Yes. And, and so I was in an apostolic church and uh, there was a, a stalker, a male stalker who was beginning to, he was stalking me. He, I would, he would be outside my bushes when I went to go in my con. I mean, this guy was, was crazy. And mm. you know, he, he was, he had a seductive spirit on him and I wanted nothing to do with him. The church finally had to, uh, you know, tell him to get out and don't come back because yeah. of the trouble he was causing, not just with me, but other women in the church. And, and one of the leaders there said, Jennifer, don't you realize why you're being targeted? And I said, no. They said, this man, you know, to your point, Dr. Hakeem, this spirit can operate through a man. They yeah. said, don't, don't you realize that he has a Jezebel spirit? He's trying to seduce the women in the church, the prophetic women in the church, to, 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 to stain you, to, to, yes. to seduce you, to bring you into immorality before you can ever use your prophetic voice. Jezebel will lead you into sin yes. and then condemn you for the sin so that you don't want to prophesy. You don't want to do what God's called you to do because you're in condemnation. So you go hide in the cave of condemnation yes. and, and you don't want to come out. And the Lord is calling prophetic voices out of the cave. Yes. It's time to stop hiding from Jezebel. Jezebel, you know what? Here's the thing. And we'll talk more about this later. But I have to say this right now. The first time in scripture that Jezebel was confronted, Jezebel was defeated. Yes. Jehu. Come on. Come on. Jehu. <laughs> Come on, Jehu. Come on. <laughs> Jehu said, throw her down. Jehu was the first one. Ahab did not confront Jezebel. Right. Ahab was too weak to confront Jezebel. Ahab wanted Jezebel to be Jezebel because he didn't have the backbone to do the, 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 the he, he yes. didn't have the backbone to exercise his own authority. So, you know, yeah, he went to war, whatever. When he wanted something, he had Jezebel go do the dirty work. He, Jezebel assassinated Naboth to steal yeah, his inheritance. On. And don't let Jezebel assassinate your character and steal your inheritance with it. Some of you are just coming up into ministry. Maybe you're a little green. Maybe you don't know the ropes yet. Let me tell you something. If you are doing 
anything for the Lord, whether you're in ministry, whether you're not in ministry, if you set your heart to go after God hard, that Jezebel spirit wants to silence your voice, wants to silence the voice of the evangelist, the pastor, any of you, any of you, any of you, and you've got to stand up and confront this thing. We're going to talk about that later, uh, but I want to kick it back over to you guys because I'm I'm just getting too fired up. (laughs) Well, I mean, let me say this because I'm getting stirred up as well. Let me say this, that even as my brother was talking about, and that's one of the things that we were able to, to very early on see is that one of the things is that as Dr. Hakeem and as Apostle Jennifer has said, is that a Jezebel spirit is designated, is designed to shut your mouth. And what she tried to do early on in my brothers and I's ministry was to try to kill us before we even get started. And the point that Dr. Hakeem had pointed out was that she took the mic from him whispered in his ear and told him that he is done and go to have a seat. And I just felt like somebody is watching that there has been, even from someone even in leadership, someone that you've even honored, someone that you've even respected, but they had this this operation, the spirit of Jezebel operating in them and was used to try to silence your voice, keep you from speaking, and it's, it's created this this intimidation, this created this fear. And it's almost like they've taken your voice. And even as my brother was saying how she took the mic and even early on, and as Apostle Jennifer said, the the Jezebel spirit recognizes that you have a voice and recognize that you have something to say that will be, uh, will bring such an impact to the kingdom of God. And so, and as she's talked about with, even with Jezebel taking Naboth's vineyard and vineyard is where it's a place that grows fruits, multiple types of fruits and, and, and the place to try to take inheritance. And so I believe that the enemy is using the spirit of Jezebel because many of you display various kinds of fruits, yes. uh, anointings, yes. giftings. Uh, you've, you've shown that very on, you're ripe, you're starting to bud. And if Jezebel recognizes or Naboth recognizes that you are budding, you're a budding prophet or a budding evangelist. You're Good. at the grassroots level and they can recognize your potential. Then that system is designed to try to kill it before it even grows into its full potential. And so Ooh. I felt that even as my brother was saying is that if, if my brother, uh, allow that spirit to to have his way then he wouldn't be the voice that of, of you know that he is today and so i just feel like for someone on here is that god is saying that i'm now getting ready to shut the mouths of the jezebels i'm getting ready to Woo! cut off her of her agenda over your life and god is getting ready to put the mic back in your hand he's about to give you a voice again and some of you felt like you couldn't prophesy because a, a pastor said or he was able to see or she was able to recognize Recognize the level of gifting and anointings and abilities that's on the inside of you and the agendas of hell saw your fruit, saw it budding and wanted to kill it before it even even manifests. And so I believe this is the season that God's going to bring through the prophetic of restoration of the anointing to give you your voice back, to give you the ability to speak again. God said, I'm breaking off the muzzle off your mouth that that men has put on you. And God said, I'm going to I'm going to raise your volume again. I'm yeah. going to give you the strength again and you're going to I'm going to remove every fear, every intimidation and God's going to give you the voice again. You're going to have a prophetic voice or you're going to speak for God in this season. Let me let me jump in there and Pastor Jennifer because <laughs> we get stirred up. <laughs> and I, but I'm reminded I'm reminded of Jesus just when Jesus was announced. Come on. Jesus was announced. The Bible says that um, you just do your um, go to Genesis. I mean, excuse me, when you go to Matthew, you see that. All of uh, Jerusalem, all of Jerusalem was troubled just at Jesus' announcement of who he, of someone emerging, the authentic one emerging. And so we see the spirit of Jezebel already in operation through Herod. Come on. So so Jezebel operates when someone is yielded and, and, and it finds itself in places of authority. And so it's a spirit. And so when Jesus was just at his announcement, all, all of Jerusalem was troubled uh, with Herod. And so we can see that that generational attack and a generational assault going down mm. the centuries against anointed ones. Listen, you are anointed, whether you're a prophet or not. 
you are anointed by the Holy Spirit and God is using you as a voice and a, a change agent in the earth to bring change. And so that spirit of assassination and murder is going to target those who are anointed. You Come have on. To look yourself in the mirror and say, listen, I'm anointed. And the way you fight back against Jezebel and those systems, and you got to know your identity. Yes. yes. That the enemy is afraid of anyone that knows her or his identity. And so, so Jezebel, um, uses people that lack identity, use people that are hmm. vulnerable, use uh -huh. people that really don't know who they are. They're trying to find their way. And so with their charismatic ways and energy, Jezebel know how to use the prophetic. Remember, Jezebel claimed and, and was self-acclaimed, self, you know, she called herself yeah. a prophetess. We talking about that spirit. And so so she will attach herself or that spirit, in other words, will attach itself to people who loves the prophetic. That's why she uh, finds prophetic people. But she uses the, that spirit would use the charismatic gifts. So they appear very, very prophetic. Yeah. Know how to say the right words, know how to, you know, turn your heart to make it sound right. But it's a, it's a, a seductive spirit and mm -hmm. it's deceiving at the root. And so you've got to be very careful. So you have to know who you are. One of the things to fight back against Jezebel is number one, knowing your identity. Number two is knowing the word of God. You have to know truth because the deceptive spirit is laced with deception, lies, it's cunning, it's demeaning, it's, it, it likes to uh, malign people. So you have to be very confident of who you are, but also knowing the word of God. If you do not know the word of God, if you are not in, re in right relationship with your revelation, which is Jesus, then you'll be easily drew in, uh, and, and pulled in by Jezebel. We have to fight back with truth and present truth. And also, it's three of us on this broadcast. Listen, one can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. Three. Can you imagine with three? Yes. Two? And so you have to connect with people that are strong, that will help you fight against uh, Jezebel. But Jezebel always, that spirit will attack anyone that is emerging, like Jesus, who is anointed. He will, it will try to kill you, assassinate you, murder you before you ever come forth. So I want to encourage someone today. You can fight back and you can win. And listen, like Apostle Jennifer said, Jezebel was defeated the same day. So you can <laughs> defeat it the same day right now. Yes. Hour. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. My God. Amen. I, amen. I, I find it it's so very powerful when you do your history on Jezebel. And I, uh, you know, I know Apostle Jennifer have done a phenomenal job with just a lot of her writings on the subject matter. Um, and one of the things I found very powerful when I did my homework just on the name of Jezebel speaks very speaks volumes. And with Jezebel name meaning uh, married to Ahab or or the, the wife of Ahab, but also means unchaste and someone who is that functions in immorality, perversion, uh, one who's really because the actuality she was married to Ahab on paper. But she was really married to Satan. Yes. And so there was, so on paper, because when she had married Ahab, the job was because she was a Phoenician priestess and she was used to trading. She was used to transaction. And so the marriage between her and Ahab was more contractual. Is this more of a contract? And so that's why uh, Jezebel is a contracted assassin Woo! and all, everything that she does yeah. is through contract it wasn't through love her, her marriage between ahab was not through love it mm -hmm. was all about an agenda and so her her operation was simply is to rid all of israel of the true and worship of god and to get rid of god's prophets and so her whole agenda of why she married ahab who was king of israel was to simply to, to rid of all of Israel of true worship. And one of the areas that is, that's key to the prophetic is worship. And you find is that sometimes in worship, because that's becomes the incubation for the prophetic is worship and prayer. And so Jezebel positioned herself to marry uh, Ahab 
for the, the sole agenda was to introduce false worship and false gods to Israel. And she had to do it through a contract, through covenant. And so it through this immorality or through this perversion that was twisted. And so that's why she is an assassin, because anything that is pure, anything that is covenant and that we are, God is married to the church. And so that so that Jezebelic system. And let me say this for many of you that know is that Jezebel doesn't operate by herself. Uh, there has to be an Ahab also in work because without an Ahab, there's no Jezebel. And without Jezebel, there's no Ahab. And so they are a, they are contracted assassins. And so they work through uh, agendas. They work through covenant. And, and just so you will understand how this looks like in modern is that Oftentimes, there are those that has a Jezebelic spirit will look for weaknesses or wounded sons and daughters of wounded individuals, leaders that pray and not P-R-A-Y, be P-R-E-Y. They prey on the weak on. and those who have a lack of identity and those that have a lack of a voice. And so they work through covenant, through relationships in order f- for them to boast their agenda. Wow, 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 wow. Let me jump in on that. I want to give you two examples of this covenant point. That happened in my life. I was in an apostolic church many years ago, and you know, it, 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 it turned very controlling. Now, that is one of the downfalls, one of the potential pitfalls of the apostolic is that if, if it's not governed rightly, it, it becomes too authoritarian, and, yes. and, and it becomes very controlling. Now, most apostolic churches are not this way, but it can happen. Apostles can fall. Yes. Apostles can uh, get that, you know, Jezebelic controlling nature upon them. And, and I was at, at this church and, and, and people kept leaving and I was in leadership. And one day the, the pastor's wife had the rest of us gather around the table. And she said, nobody at this table is ever going to leave. We're making a covenant right now. No one at the table is ever going to leave. Who's, who's going to say yes. And it was like a pressure to covenant for life. Now, I do mm. believe that the Lord does call some people to minister together for life. I mean, yes. look at uh, Bill Johnson and Chris Valaton from yes. Bethel. Yes. They're in a co- they, 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 they've talked about this. They're in a covenant together. You know, Bill Hammond and his, you know, Jane and Tom and, and his sons, they have covenanted to build that church, to build this movement together. And, and so they, so we were pressured, like, who's going to do this? And then then they called us up in front of the congregation that next Friday night and said, these are in covenant. They're never leaving. Well, one by one, we all broke away. And one by one, almost all the people found out, discovered the Jezebelic undergirdings of the church and left. Yeah. Another example is a woman that came through our ministry uh-huh. and she was recommended uh, very highly from a very large prayer ministry. If I called the name of it, you would know it came in and, and, and my guard was down because I had friends that knew this person and they yeah. were like, she's awesome. She, you know, she'll be an asset to the ministry. Well, bless God. You know, it, 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 I just, I just let my discernment just, 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 just go. Yeah. And, and, and sure enough, she came in trying to help, trying to help doing all this stuff, doing all this stuff. And she said, you know, I'm going to stand with you till Jesus comes back. I see you're on the front lines. I see you getting attacked. You know, I, I'm coveting to covenanting to stand with you for, you know, till Jesus comes back. I'm going to lay my life down for this ministry, for this cause. And I'm like, you know, I've only known you five minutes. Like, <laughs> like what, what is this? You know? And so Jezebel will come in and look to do the, the thing in your life to help you in ways uh, that uh, you need help and we'll try to covenant with you quickly. Yes. But as yeah, as soon as you say no, as soon as you don't pay Jezebel the currency, whether that's favor, whether that's opportunity, whether that's uh, some kind of position in the ministry, as soon as you say in, oh, no, Come on. this spirit will manifest and begin to try to assassinate you and tear you down. Wow. I'm going to tell you, let me just jump right in there, Apostle Jennifer. Listen, I've, we've been through it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and one of the things, like I said before, is that Jezebel, that Jezebel system know how to find it. It solicits, it recruits. Come yeah. On. It, it, Come on. It knows what it's looking for. It's, a, it, it's an intelligent spirit. Yes. It, it needs it. So it finds people um, that that are, like my brother said, that are kind of weak or feeble, but but also it, it looks, it, it preys on people's skill set. 
And so if you're intelligent, if you're smart, if you're charismatic, you're gifted, it's Jezebel's going to find, will seek you out. And so they will bring offers. They mm -hmm. will bring offers and propositions to you yeah. uh, yes. for you to, uh, to come into covenant, into agreement. Contract, yeah. And so it's that yeah. contract. And so if you say N-O, like Apostle Jennifer said, explanation mark, <laughs> and make it very clear, <laughs> then what happens right after you will start finding, because we've experienced it mm -hmm. several times, yeah. and just even recently, in the last year or so, but very heavy recently, is when you say no, or you say not at this time, or yeah. say the Lord has not lead me. You know, sometimes yes, yes, you have to be led by His Spirit. And if we are people of prayer and we're prophetic, we have discernment, and we know the Word of God. Every alignment, uh, every relationship is not covenant. It doesn't matter if they said God said it. Yeah, you have to make sure that you have your own mind. And so, so we said no, not at this time. You know, we'd be not, we, we were nice with it. We didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but we just said no, it's not at this time. God hasn't let us, but we'll or we'll pray about it. Let's get back to you and pray about it. But when there's a Jezebel spirit, they already have a preconceived thought. They already have a plan, and they want uh, people that are strong to submit under them, um, not really to for, for a mutual uh, help into. Yeah. That, king and his kingdom, but really to advance their empire, their kingdom, their That's mother. It. And That's it. Jezebel is all about themselves. It is self-centered. It's not, it's not about working uh, as a relationship in covenant. It wants you to go in covenant so it can break you down and, 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 and That's it. clone you of some sort, if I can use that term, but clone you and cause you to be robotic and lethargic in how you operate and you lose who you are and you lose your identity and you lose and you wanted some of you, thank you, Holy Spirit. Some yes. of you are watching, you felt like you, you've been capped. Some of you've been very capped. Your gift has been capped. You are, some of you seers that are on here, you know, yes. you couldn't see again. You was like, what's going on? I'm not dreaming again. Mm -hmm. I'm having Holy Spirit visit a visitation or encounters. What is happening? You may have to go check your alignment. Because yes. They look good on they look good for social media. They oh, look good. Sure. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my it god. It sounds good. It looks good because that's what she, that's what that agenda does and that spirit does. It Ooh. makes it looks good. It's mask. <laughs> and so that is our job as Come on. of God and as apostles is to rip the mask and to unmask Jezebel and Come to on. expose the agenda, to expose the the the, the intention that is underlining that you do not see. So it, it it comes nice and mushy and sweet and know how to say, but the, you know, but underlining there there's control. Underlining there is they're seductive. It looks good. So some of you've been seduced. Come on, come on. Yay! Yes. Yes. God wow, you. wow. God did not lead you. Wow. It was your emotions. You were impressed with what you saw. And Come then on. now you're caught into a spider web because that's what that, that, that system or network is. It's a spider web. And so it, it baits you, but to, to, ravel, to get you um, entangled, uh -huh. and so it's hard for you to break loose. Yes. And so we cannot be so moved or quick to see things because it looks good, it sounds good, or Come looks on. popular. You got to test out the fruit. You got to test out the motive. You have to test out the alliance. <laughs> Most of the time, the same like spirit attracts to each other. Woo! Come on. Very care, Come care on. Of the networks and the alignments because they all share the same characteristics. That's it. Comes from the head. Careful. So we're unmasking. Come on. Come on. Jezebel agenda, but we we want to target the assassin and her 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 agenda um, because we're saying her just it's not gender specific, but it's a seducing spirit, and so it can be male and female. And so one of the things, real quick, is the definition of assassin for those who don't know. I just looked it up real quick, and it's a murderer of an important or prominent or famous person. In a surprise attack for political yeah. Come on. or religious reasons. That's powerful. So an assassin only purpose is to find someone of importance, prestige, someone yeah. that has um, that has a name. You gotta know you're anointed by God. You gotta know that you're important by God. And so if you've been targeted, it's because there's something on you. You have real oil, 
You're not greasy. You're oily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have the Holy Spirit anointing on you that Jezebel wants. Jezebel wants to break you down. So she, which is the spirit, the agenda is to really cause you to to, to comply with their 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 uh, ways. I, I find it very interesting because one of the things that that you both are talking about, and uh, one of the things about a Jezebelic system is 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 its primary one of the primary influences. It is tries to isolate you. Yes, uh, uh, it's a it's a spirit of isolation, and one of the things that Jennifer has shared in uh, her one of her encounters with a Jezebelic spirit was how it it wants your loyalty, it wants you to to be a part, yes. and and as my brother started talking about that, you know, we know that even when Jehu confronted Jezebel, the first thing that she did was she painted her eyes. And she adored yes. her hair, I mean her head, and so she she dressed it up, you know, because she was trying to really mask and hide the real her, the real person. And so oftentimes when we in haste join or align without revelation or without any leading of the Holy Spirit, and we just go off of the hype, because oftentimes uh, it looks one way on the surface. Yeah. It looks it looks awesome. It looks like it got it going on. It looks like it's it's you know on Facebook it's it's popping. It's it's the thing to be a part of. And but not recognizing that if you're not spiritual and you're not prophetic and your antennas doesn't really go up, then you could be seduced into aligning yourself with a a leader or a church or or uh, a ministry that or even a network that really is killing the prophetic as yes. opposed to building and restoring it. And so if you're not careful, you you could be with all of the anointing, all of the giftings, all of the potential that's locked up within you. And you have to be a part of prophetic houses that has the capacity to unlock you. And the wrong alignment will not unlock you. The wrong alignments will shut you down. It will lock you up. It will keep you isolated. It will make you feel uh, controlled and feel like that you have to, you know, go through a bunch of uh, uh, these uh, gymnastics to, you know, and so we've been through that with even where the leaders start pitting you uh, against other people. Yes. And one of the things is, is that we were part of ministries, uh, help build ministries. And when we left, the pastor cursed us, even the members yeah. of this church cursed us and say that you will never become uh, without us. And, you you know, they cursed our ministry and said you will never be what God has called you to be. And even some that at one time prophesy the word of the Lord and say that you are called to be prophets and God's going to use you mightily. And those same individuals, the same leaders, the same pester tree, then after we left the ministry was the same ones that cursed us and sent bounty hunters against our purpose to try to kill us. Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Let me jump in here and say this about, about alignment. See, many of you, you're, you're dealing with Jezebel's witchcraft. And in 2 Kings 9, Joram or Joram, uh, he met Jehu. Jehu was riding his chariot furiously. And, Jehu, and Joram said, is it peace, Jehu? And he said, how can there be peace as long as your mother with her harlotries and her witchcrafts? Come on. You know, and, and so Jezebel releases witchcraft. And so if you are in a Jezebelic alignment, you're going to feel oppressed. You're going to feel controlled. Uh, you know, you, you come in, you might feel, you know, might feel good at first. You're promoted. You're flattered. You know, but but then all whoa, of a sudden, whoa. once you're in the web, you begin to feel oppressed. You, you can't move. You have to get permission. You, you, you lose your voice. You have Come to agree on. with the party line. You can't prophesy whoa. different. You're told, shut down that seer gift. You can't, you can't, I don't want you seeing these things. You know what? Jezebel is afraid of the seers because they see Jezebel. Anybody oh. with the prophetic anointing, Jezebel is scared of you because you can discern it. But let me tell you something. If you've been feeling exhausted, you've been feeling controlled, you've been not able to focus, you've been taken, you know, here's the thing. Jesus said, I have this against you. This is Revelation 2. I have this against you. Uh, that you tolerate this woman Jezebel, he, but he said, he said, he said, I gave her a space to repent, and she, she did. would not. <laughs> Therefore, I threw her on a sick bed. Her and those who commit adultery with her. 
her children and those who commit adultery with her. If you are tolerating Jezebel, Whoa. you have opened a portal of hell over Come your on. life. I'm Come telling on. you, sickness will knock on your door. Come on. Financial attack will knock on your door and oppression will knock on your door. But here's the thing. Now, listen, 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 listen. You cannot, you will not successfully break a Jezebel assignment off your life until you break the Jezebel alignment in your life. Uh, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Come on. Some of you, the reason why you can't break that Jezebel Whoa. assignment is because you're in a Jezebel alignment. And oh. until you cut ties, until you confront this thing, until you decide not to tolerate it anymore, you're going to get that because you are part and parcel of the sin. And I'm not trying to be mean spirited. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to set you free. You've got to understand that this, the alignment is, let me just give you a quick story. Yes. Now I live, I live in a condo on the beach. Now I, I live in a new condo now, but I, I, I still own the one I lived in and I was traveling. I was traveling and, and I would come home. There would be roaches in my house. I'm like, what in the world is going on with this? That my daughter is no longer at home. There's no <laughs> ice cream under the bed. Right. There's no potato chips in the couch. <laughs> you know, there ain't no reason for, then, for roaches in my house. Come on. And so I, I got the exterminator. They said, we don't know what's going on. They would exterminate. Bugs came back. Three days later, you know, you know, the exterminator come again. Three days later, bugs come back. Finally, I got mad. I said, I'm paying you all this money. I'm setting off bug bombs. These roaches keep coming back into my house. They come out. They go upstairs. They, they go upstairs with the snowbirds. The Canadians had left. It was summer. It was wintertime. It was summertime, rather. Canadians not there. They said there's a roach infestation in their condo. Oh. Listen. Oh, be because you are aligned <laughs> with their wall, because you share a wall, they are coming from their place to your place. And in that moment, the Lord showed me who you're connected to matters more than you think. And as soon as, you know, be, your alignments matter, people, whether that's alignment in a church, alignment in a relationship, alignment with a job, you know, alignment with your friends, be careful because if you're aligned with the Jezebel, you will not break that Jezebel assignment or, you know, I, I'm not going to get into what if I'm married to a Jezebel, I'm not getting into yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> the, the point about it is, is you can't submit to it. You can't tolerate it. You, you, you have to allow yourself to be manipulated. You have to allow yourself to be Come controlled. On. And, 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 and you've got to stop tolerating. I'll stop there. Cause I'm going to go on a rant. I already, uh, I already went on a rant. Let me no, tell you, it was so good. Apostle Jennifer, what you just shared. Um, and let me just say this. Um, we can become conspirers of, 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 of a hitman or an assassin. Yeah. And that goes right with alignment. And if you're, if there's this backdoor or undermining um, where there are assassins like to do things in the dark. Um, I remember there was a time where I had even mice issues and it uh -huh. was a conversation. You know, it's like, wait a minute, it's 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 summertime, it's, it's infested with mice. And I know we cleaned the house and everything is good, but it was the neighbors. And so when yeah. you're lying, it's, you know, I can't go to the neighbor and say, hey, you know, get an exterminator. But what I'm saying is you got to do your part. And so when yeah. you do your part and you clean up and you do your part, and what you do is we had to make sure we had to get some baits and we had to mark the spots where these um, these mice will be. And, you know, we see all the droplings. But my, my point is this, is that, Sometimes you got to use uh, spiritual, if I can use this bait, to really hit what is breeding and what is feeding on an assassin. Ooh. Come on, come and on. And so over time, we had to keep getting bait and bait and put it where they were marked, where yeah. they were fine. I mean, behind the, the, <laughs> the desk and, and, and be, you know, because mice come out at night. And so an assassin or people that are sneaky, they're, 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 they're cunning, they're, you know, they're, you can't really see them, but they do their work in the dark. You know, everything happens in the dark, so they're sneaky. They run around, they're really fast, so, you know, you can't even catch them because they move so fast. And so, and, and, and I'm getting somewhere with this, is this, by revelation, is that if we do not play, put the right spiritual bait through the word of God and do prayer in, in yes. the spots, what happens is once we start marking the spots of where they, oh my God. they were eating, where they were feeding, and... And once Ooh. we did that over time, we start seeing, because what happened when mice does is they get the bait, the poison, and um, we had to be sophisticated with it. We couldn't get yeah. the, you know, the metal traps. We had to get the bait trays that where they can go in. And, yeah. and so they'll take the, the, the bait and the poison and they take it back to their nest. Their, their nest. 
and they feed their, 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 their babies, I guess, and it kills it. And so you got to kill the whole web. You got to kill the whole network in prayer. And it has to be done, but you have to have the right bait. You have the right source. And also I learned this is that we have to make sure that if, if we're conspiring with a, a leader that has a Jezebelic spirit, when we're engaging in slander and gospel, uh, yes. me, gossip instead of the gospel, then we become, we're, we, we're, there's conspiracy. Yes. So, we, so that's how the, the web and the network grows. And so you know how gossip does the slander. You take it from one person, and once you get to the 30th person, the, the, the story's all missed and mangled. And so we are, there's many of you watching that's been under slander, false accusation. Um, also, this, and I, I felt this very strong apostle, Jennifer and Dr. Knight, very strong for those who are watching. Some of you have went to leaders, and you shared personal. Come on now. Personal things with your, with your leaders. Tell it, tell it. And they said they won't say anything about it. Whether it's an immoral lifestyle that you've been involved in in the past, whether it might have been drugs or abuse or substance abuse or whatever it may be, a bad marriage or whatever, and you share something very deep and personal, and they, uh -huh. and they open themselves up again. Jezebel like to open themselves up. They, 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 they look like they, they're open. But once you say no or once you leave, then they'll use what you say. Ooh. against you that wow. is assassination of your character that is to blackball you that is to undermine you and i break that off of you right yes now. yes <laughs> that you've been silenced and you walked in fear and intimidation and you're afraid that Shit. it's going to get out and it's going to stop you because you've been through something in the past that god has forgiven you for and you've forgiven yourself for and you release somebody else who violated you but this leader is holding that over you i break you free right now by the power of the holy spirit and i I say in Jesus' name that you will arise and you will speak again. I say that you will have a voice again. And I say that whatever that's been spoken against your destiny or your purpose, use as a web or use as to blackball you, to shut you down. I say Come it's on. broken it's yes. and it's smashed by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Let me just say this. Oh, my God. I'm going to just say this. There is an anointing that I sense right now, even online. And the Lord just reminded me in 2 Kings 9 when, the, when Jehu came and and he confronted Jezebel. I found it very interesting is that the, the scripture says that there were about two or three eunuchs that was a, that was around Jezebel at the time. I want to help somebody understand this, because one thing that I found when I did my study on Jezebel is that she prefer her, her preferential treatment was by eunuchs. She surrounded herself with eunuchs, which those Ooh. who doesn't have the capacity to produce or reproduce. Wow. Those don't have the ability to produce seed. And so Jezebel is, is, is intimidated by anybody with seed in their mouths. Come on. In other words, that's why she's threatened by the prophets, because prophets carry fertility in their mouths. And so I found it interesting that Jezebel had a bunch of eunuchs around her, but she also had false prophets eating yeah. at her table. And so she wants to control the prophetic economy. She wants to control what, what the prophets are feeding on. And so, but I found it interesting that when Jehu came, with fire in his eyes to see her her topple the scripture says there were two or three eunuchs around her and so i want to speak this to someone that you was made a eunuch because jezebel has castrated you has called you to be unproductive had cut off your spiritual capacity to produce fruit to manifest the gifts to manifest the anointing to manifest the prophetic but i found it very interesting when jehu told these eunuchs cast her down throw her down they took her and threw her down and i just feel that for someone on here prophetically is that when you felt like you were unproductive you felt like you couldn't manifest the power of god manifest the supernatural because you were connected and aligned to a jezebelic system the lord yeah. is going to give you a jehu anointing by the command of jehu to now say that if you want to be productive you got to cast that spirit down and i believe there's an anointing that's going to come upon those who've been unproductive and god's going to give you the Jehu anointing to cast Jezebel down and there's going to be a restoration of your ability to produce, to manifest, to, 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 uh, to be able to prophesy. God is getting ready to cause creative miracles to come back in your life again. He's getting ready to give your voice again. He's getting ready to cause the anointing to be birthed again. No longer you will stay unproductive and unfruitful under the Jezebelic system. As long as you stay connected to that alignment, you will be a eunuch.
Oh my God. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. That is so, so, so good. I, I just, my God, my God, my God. Let me just say this. The Lord showed me many of you are operating in a very strong prophetic. You know, Elijah operated in very strong prophetic. He operated in a very strong prophetic. But Jezebel began to release word curses against him. She sent a messenger of death. She sent a yes. eunuch to deliver a message. Je she, she said, Oh. She said, tell Elijah that he's going to be like one of these false prophets tomorrow. I'm going to get his head. I'm going to kill him. Come I'm on. going to take him down. And this word cursed released witchcraft. This word cursed released fear. And Elijah began to run. Some of you have that Elijah spirit. Whoa. And you've been pressed against the prophetic. And it's pure. And it's holy. And it's accurate. And it's awesome. And there's miracles. Yes. But when Jezebel said, boo, you ran. And you've got to stop acting like Elijah in this season. And you need to put on that Jehu mantle. You don't have to take off your Elijah mantle. But you got to put that Jehu mantle up on top of it and begin to confront this thing. Because listen to me, it wants to kill you. There's a prophet out there and you're so you're sorely wounded. You're licking your wounds. You're feeling sorry for yourself. You're saying, I'm the only one. Nobody gets me. I stood. I took a stand. You got hit by Jezebel. But the Lord would say to you today, it's time time to get up. Yes. It's time to come out of the cave. It's time to take a stand for my righteousness and my holiness. It's time to speak to that Jezebel spirit. It's time to throw her down. It's time to get back up on the wall again. It's oh, time to Decree and declare what you've seen, what you've heard. It's time to oh. shake off the fear and go forth with boldness, says the Lord, because I am with you and I will restore you and I will heal you as you speak my word. As you speak my word, says the Lord, I will heal you. Uh -huh. Don't wait until you're fully healed. Don't wait until you feel restored. You will be healed as you come out and speak my word. That is your stand against Jezebel, says the Lord. Ah, and even, God, and even the Lord would say, son and daughter, get ready. Because even as I'm placing that Jehu mantle even upon you, for some of you felt that your voice has been lost and Jezebel has killed you, tried to kill your assignment. But I hear the Lord say in this season uh, that as you felt like Elijah, that you were alone, you felt isolated, you felt like you didn't have the strength. And the Lord says that, yes, I'm putting back upon you that same strength, that same anointing, that same grace that gave you the ability to confront uh, even all of those prophets. But the Lord says this will be the season that you will not feel like you have to run, but I'm going to even couple it with a Jehu anointing and I'm going to give you that ability. And the Lord says, no, surely that in this season that you're not alone for I even cause Obadiah to even cause those that have been hidden away that has the same discontentment and they will confront and they're hidden away for there is an emergence that is taking place. And the Lord says, oh, arise, oh, Jehu, arise, oh, Elijah, arise for you shall be the voice. And I'm giving your voice back, says the Lord and no longer you will run but I will give you that confrontational ability and that anointing to deal and to challenge and even to throw it down says the spirit of God Jesus let me say this let me say this let me say this I know we got it we got to start winding this down uh, and I think we need to do a follow up. I think I think we need to do just a whole another one where we just yes. answer questions, you know, maybe get on another time and just answer questions. Yes. But I want to say this. I was just in London and I was with a, a woman from Ghana and uh, and she said something that I'd never heard before. And it was very powerful. She said one of the key defenses and one of the ways you get free from Jezebel is through purity, through purity. Wow. Yes. Be because. The thing is, if you have a price, then Jezebel will find the price. If your price is, you know, Jezebel cannot control you Jesus. until Jezebel flatters you. <laughs> and so if, if you, if you're, if, you know, that's where it goes back to Dr. Hakim said with the identity, you know, if you don't know who you are, if you can be bought Jezebel, maybe it's, it's, it's greed. Maybe it's building your own kingdom. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's, 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 it's that affirmation, whatever it is, a promotion, a position, Come on. Jezebel will, 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 will buy you. And so in this season, we've got to purify ourselves because once you get to where you can, listen, if you have been bought, this is where you have to be willing to walk away 
away from everything you've known. When I was in that apostolic church, I ended up having to walk away. I lost, lost all my friends. I lost all my ministry positions. I lost my front row seat. I lost everything. But you know what I regained? My freedom. Oh, my freedom on. in Christ. Yes, and so yes, sometimes yes. you got to be willing to walk away from these Jezebels, these these Ahabs, these Adalias, you know, you, these 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 yes. you know these false prophets, these false apostles. You got to be willing to walk away. And some of you, I just sense you're like, but I don't want to because you know I, I paid my hundred twenty nine dollars, <laughs> or or I don't want to because you know I I, I, I got my ordination. They're going to strip me. They're going to send on. a letter. They're going to put it out on the internet. They're going to call people and get me canceled from conferences. You know what? Walk away because God has something better for you. Yes, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, go ahead, go ahead. No, that's that's really good. I don't have nothing else to add to that, Apostle. That was really, really good. Um, and as Dr. Hakeem said, you don't want to lose your identity trying to connect with a, a, a alignment that uh, through the affirmation and people find themselves tr- or trying to find themselves through these alignments. Uh, but God has put something so different and so unique and God has put something so uh, different on the inside of you. And we just want to encourage you that you have, God wants to give you the courage to walk away and it's okay. And I believe that something far more greater is coming upon you and God's going to use you in a greater capacity, but you have to be able to break away from those uh, alignments. And I just want to say real quick is that um, Find true prophetic networks and, and relationships, true apostles and prophets that have you in mind. But also that number one is that Jesus is the focus. Yes. That, that system of that person is the center of everything, the center of, uh, you know, the, or they act like they're the center of the universe or they, they're the voice of the apostle for the whole body of Christ. Then you, that, that, that you have to question that and take that into prayer. But you want to correct, connect with people that are, that are like mind, like spirit, that have, um, that has a heart and agenda to advance the king and his kingdom, but also have you as well in mind. And just be encouraged. This is a season to free yourself. Yourself. Listen, if you're in a church, you know what I mean? Jezebel can be one of your pew members. It can be one of your pastors. It can be an apostle. It can be a prophet. Anyone can open themselves to that spirit. And so we need true accountability in this hour. Yeah. Um, that people will hold each other. We connected. We know we've known um, Jennifer for a while, but we, we've now joined forces. Yes. Um, and we're fighting and we're not only fighting for you, but we're releasing present truth and biblical truth. Um, to set people free because listen the truth will make you free and so this is the purpose of this and we'll do a follow-up and we yes any of your questions i know i uh, wish, wish we wish you had longer but i'm telling you this is just to start the conversation and yeah. we want to be bold enough listen god has given you a voice and so as much as the enemy try to hit you or punch you in the mouth listen god is going to give you endurance he's going to give you boldness again he's going to give you the ability the strength to speak again and to prophesy and to work but also to deal with these yeah. things that people are too afraid to address listen they're afraid that they might be on the hit list if they speak against <laughs> yes. They yes they're going to be on the devil's hit list or on jezebel's hit list or you know or a whole web of people um the, the hitmen will be after you and so you don't have to walk around paranoid if your one of your doors are going to be shut don't compromise this is what i want yes to yes don't, empathetically do not compromise if you're a Amen. prophet if you're a seer if you're an apostle if you're doing the kingdom work you don't have to compromise for a platform allow yeah. god to build your platform mm-hmm. listen yeah. you may he made Abraham's name great. Yes. For the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore will make your name great. Amen. If you stay pure and you stay honest with yourself, you connect with true networks, true apostles and prophets. That's what we're doing. We're connecting, joining forces because we're out of covenant, we love each other. It's no agenda. We sow into each other. We believe in each other. But we, number one, we hold each other accountable. So I bless each and every one of you. And we will be back on another program. Amen. 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 I want to give you all an opportunity uh, to sow into this ministry. And I'm going to sow into Dr. Hakeem and Dr. Naeem, these prophets of God. I want to give you an opportunity to sow. If this is blessing you, I want to give you an opportunity to sow. You don't have to. This is a free broadcast. But if you feel led to sow, I want you to do that. I want you to to get on your PayPal, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. And in the notes section, so that I can track this because I want to sow into them. Uh, I want you to put Jezebel. So go to paypal.me. I'm going to put this up on the screen. <laughs> paypal.me. Hallelujah. I'm going to put it up on the screen. Paypal. 
dot M E slash Jennifer LeClaire and put in Jezebel. I'm going to pray for you in just a minute. I'm going to pray yes. over this. I'm going to, I'm going to pray over you in just a minute. PayPal dot M E slash Jennifer LeClaire and put in the, in the, in the note, Jezebel, and I'll track it. Amen. I also want to give you an opportunity to join forces with us yes. in the Ignite Perfect Network. Yes. IgniteNow.org. I'm going to type that in for you. IgniteNow.org. Join forces, forces with us. It's a pure prophetic move. This is not about uh, building my platform. This is about building a platform for the prophetic yes. to, uh, to, to, uh, to rise up. We just launched a company of seers, ignitenow.org. Join the movement. Come on. Get involved. Amen. You want more resources on Jezebel? I've written several books. Go to my website. But listen, Listen, I almost feel like the three of us need to write some kind of short book just like e-book. on some of the stuff we talk, yes. like an ebook. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I okay. think we need to do that. I think we need to get that going on. Sure. Um, so get involved in what blesses you. Uh, so if, if you're led to, you know, you know me, all of you know me. I don't pressure and manipulate for, for money, but I feel like some of you, the, your seed will become a weapon tonight and your Ooh. sowing will become an act of war Whoa. against Jesus. Isabel. Amen. And so I, I want to, I want to pray oh, to I'm just break that. this assignment and we're just going to agree father. And if you guys want to pray after me, you can, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but father, I thank you for the anointing for the Jehu anointing. We yeah. release that Jehu anointing over your people. We say, uh, have the courage, have the backbone to rise up and confront this spirit. Remember, it's not a, 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 a person. It's a spirit. God, give us the courage. The righteous are as bold as a lion. So yes. Lord, give us that boldness. Give us that willingness. I break the spirit of fear off you. That would be uh, succumbing to the intimidation of Jezebel. I break the wandering and the wandering and the worry that keeps you up at night. I break the witchcraft off you yes. in Jesus' name. I say no longer will the spirit have a one up on you, but you have the upper hand in Jesus' name oh. because you have the truth that sets you free. And I thank you, Lord, that you that little by little uh, begin to unravel these, 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 these truths that we've shared tonight. Let them echo in the ears of the people that heard them and the people that will hear them. Help them to understand and apply what they've learned in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, I pray right now for the identity of those who are prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and those who are believers, Lord, that you will give them the identity because we realize and know that their identity is hid in Christ. And yes. Father, you will awaken them, allow them to see who they are, allow them to see from your perspective, allow them to see from your lens, Lord. Father, I pray for boldness. I pray for the strength of an ox to be upon them. Father, that they will fight back, Lord, and that they will team up with those that will come together in covenant. Lord, release righteous covenant relationships Father, that you will cause new irons to come into your people's uh, lives, Lord, because we realize that iron sharpens iron. Father, we break dullness and we cause them to rise and be sharp in the spirit. Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, yet you begin to identify and awaken the eyes of the seers, remove the veils over the eyes of the seers, that they may see again, that they may dream again, that they may prophesy again. We remove and we rip off the muzzle off the mouth of your prophets and prophetic intercessors. And Father, they are marked the spots in the realm of the spirit and they will mark the violators that come to assassinate their potential their gift their anointing and those that will bring character assassination to try to, to malign them and to to alter their gifts and father those who move in ministry because this is a way of living because they love what they do but father we realize that even in that father that people try to shut doors and cause them to not to advance father we pray right now that you oh. cause their tongues those who are coming against your prophets and your people that they're tongues will cleave to the mouth of their yes. mouth. and father oh. allow father them not to be spoken or speak and father we release the love of God. yes we Lord. release the love of God to those who are operating in this spirit and so father we don't we don't change uh uh um um uh, we don't we don't war back and forth, but we go yes. to the spiritual warfare. We don't fight against flesh and blood. Come on. I pray in Jesus' name that your people will arise and be strong in this season. I decree and declare that they will be ones that you have called to do great 
exploits because they know you in Jesus mighty name. And I even just pray that father, even right now, that even for those uh, that has felt that as they was aligned with certain leadership and they just felt that, that, that this alignment wasn't for them. They felt isolated. They felt like they couldn't even uh, worship. Something has affected their level of worship, their ability to even hear from you. Even it's almost like their eyes. It's almost like someone's pulled a wool over their eyes and we just take the wool over the hoods that's over the eyes of the prophets and the seers and Lord we just activate them and we just release them and Lord we say give them courage to rise up in this season and Lord even those that have felt that they've been unproductive suddenly they're just like their gifts have gone dormant since they've connect since they've aligned (laughs) since they've pledged their allegiance we break false covenants false alignments false allegiance to a system and Lord forgive them and Lord we even repent even for some that's even has has out of haste or out of hype or out of popularity or just out of a social media uh, uh, a frenzy. Lord, we say, Lord, give them revelation. And as their eyes has been opening prophetically, because even as Jezebel tried to close their eyes, but Lord, we cause the eyes to open up again, cause them to have vision again. We unlock their dreams. We unlock their potential. We say that this will be a season of unlocking. And so, Father, right now, that Lord, that some has been castrated spiritually, has been made to be un productive or unfruitful father we say lord that you will just cause a restoration to be restored the anointing of the prophetic will bring restoration of all things and so lord we just release all things back to them and so those that feel like eunuchs we say that give them the ability like jehu to cast them down and lord we just release that anointing we reactivate them uh, we recharge them uh, and we give them their voice again in jesus name amen amen Amen. Amen. Everyone, thank you for being on the broadcast. Thank you for registering in advance. Thank you for uh, all the comments, all the shares. Go ahead before you get off or after you get off, share this, subscribe to this channel. We will be back. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. All right.